call the uh, <laughs> ethics board uh, meeting of December 9th, 2020 to order. It's 2.38 p.m. And good, good afternoon. My name is Stephen Fogelman, and um, we will now hear from our Inspector General, Ms. Isabel Cunning. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for thank you for having me. I guess I, I we always work together because um, as you know, the city, the, the charter itself made me the executive director of the ethics board. It also. God, thank God, allowed me to designate that position um, to um, to somebody. And of course, we were we were very, very, very fortunate to end up with Jeff because this position. Is, it's, I have up for all of you because this is actually an incredibly difficult job that has not been done in the way it should be for years. And I can tell you that the last six months and so, especially like the last three months, the amount of elected officials and citizens that have come to me and, and thanked me for what you all are doing. I mean, I don't think you realize what a tremendous difference is that is happening within the ethics oh, by the <laughs> professionalism, by the website, by the way those manual financial disclosure in that for the first time they realized that somebody was looking at them and that was a shock to people and uh, you know that is direct testimony to, to what what foundation you all laid and, and what's happening and I just I don't think it can be underestimated what an impact you are all having and also how grateful the citizens are because everybody talks about ethics, but you're all actually doing it. And, and that's just so rare nowadays. So, you know, you're all making me look really good and I truly appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I fully, fully, fully appreciate how much work you're doing. And I, I hope you all know, I don't think it's going to get any less. If anything, it's just going to keep building because. And I found that even when, as when I came on board as the inspector general, you know, when we started, we had 70 hotline complaints. Now we're up to 800. And once people, once you build your credibility and your trust, everybody's going to turn to you. And, and, and that way, I also feel the transparency is going to be so important because that also has not existed in the ethics world. The mm -hmm. fact that we have to be consistent, we have to be transparent. So we cannot give one set of advice to one person and another set of advice to, to somebody else. And especially if one is an elected official and one is not. I mean, the fairness and the equity has to be there within the city and, and this group I know can, can really make that happen. So that's why I'm always asking Jeff, I'm like, you know, we need to keep a record and we need to let people know what has been done in the past so that the same, as we all know, the same situations keep happening over and over and over again. But I also know that what was done in the past didn't necessarily reflect the laws that we have to uphold. So they have been done what they And especially I find that within my own office because as time progressed, I heard over and over again, that's not the way it's done. But if we were doing it wrong, then let's just fix it and keep moving forward. And you guys are at the, at the, the pinnacle of it. You're, it's only going to go up from now because now we have professional, but professional board, professional staff, and I really think, you know, this is this is you're going to you're going to end up best practices in the United States of America. I will bet you. And then just like I had to testify in Atlanta, how to set up an inspector general's office, you all are going to become the the benchmark of how to set up a proper ethics department. And it's a lot of work. 
So, but that said, um, does anybody have any particular questions for me? No, 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 we're grateful for your work. I do have a question, uh, Ms. Cummings. Uh, do you prefer, would you prefer Ms. Cummings or Isabel? I like Isabel. Okay, and, and I like Arnold like Schwarzenegger. Oh, I love um, that. <laughs> <laughs> Will this be the part of the meeting where you address the, a matter that we um, debated recently and was later referred to you? I'm, I'm leaving names out in case this is not, not the part of the meeting where you're gonna do that. It um, was a matter referred to your, your office um, because we could not um, move on it because we didn't have a real full quorum and you did review it more and have made, I presume, a decision. Is this the part of the meeting where you'll share what your thoughts are? That would be the con the confidential administrative okay. session. Okay, that's um, cool. Yeah. Okay. And, and Isabel, I don't know if you would be around for that. I mean, I know we've talked about it, so I was going to relay, um, relay your stance there. Okay, great. Um, no, Donna's asked if she has been muted. She may have a question for you. Okay. I don't think she, I don't think we're muting her, but I, I know Donna has a question for you. She just texted me. Okay. Hang on. Donna, can you hear us? I don't have the option to unmute her for some reason. Yeah, so she is yeah. muted, but you, we can't unmute her. So uh, she'll have to, on her phone, if she press unmute, it's, it'll be a button on the call. Sure, sure. Let me um, try to Yeah. Con um, and Isabel, while we're waiting for Donna, I know a question that had come up maybe in previous weeks uh, was if you want to explain a little bit about how the ethics staff is actually housed within oh. OIG and the interactions between between the two. Right. Um, I think that's very important because the, the law, the law insists, you know, the law said that they wanted the inspector general's office to actually house the ethics department and so that's why they actually gave us and i don't know if you watched when i testified i told them that if they wouldn't give us additional staff we wouldn't take it on because it's impossible it's impossible to do this without at least what we've been given which is um, these two um we also have the use of the special agents in the office, and we also have myself. So we really have a staff of, you know, I say three and a half people because I'm a half. <laughs> um, but just so you understand, the, the my office, when you walk into the Inspector General's office, is on one side, but the whole ethics team is on the complete other side of the office. And, and that was done purposefully because there can be situations where my office is investigating a situation and we could end up with a conflict of interest within ourselves. So in that way, the teams are separated because had this been a, um, a law firm, which I know Melody can attest to, we would set up what used to be called a Chinese wall, whereas we wouldn't talk about the case in order not to influence each other. So in this case, we have the ability to do exactly that. Um, we, because it's sep it's separated, but it's still one office, it allows us the ability to use the resources and the expertise of what we have, but still to maintain the independence and the integrity of the ethics office. And I think that's important. And that is one of the reasons why I, even though I'm the executive director, I actually allow Jeff, I mean, Jeff talks to me all the time about what's happening, but I, I, I defer to him a lot and 100 percent on the, the day to day and everything like that. And also all the training and, and the training has been so well done and so well executed. So. You're muted. We have our own phone numbers and email address. And when the complaints come, when ethics complaints come in, they only come to our ethics email address. Um, and I know there is, and when OIG decides on its side that maybe something warrants an ethics complaint, they'll certify it to us. So it's, there's collaboration with 
with needed separation. Um, and so far, I think it's working quite well. Did we, did we get ever get Donna's question? No, in fact, um, if I could ask Jeff or Mara to just double check, because she said that um, she heard a voice <laughs> that said, you have been muted. And I don't, when, when I mute myself, I see a, a notice of it, but I don't get the voice. So uh, if you could just check and see that that didn't happen. Hmm. I think well, she's she's off now anyway. Oh, is she? Hmm. Okay. She, maybe she's trying to call back in. I don't know. Yeah, she should call back in. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll text her to that effect. Yeah. Um, any other questions for Isabel? Melody has her hand up. I just wanted to um, reiterate some of the comments from the beginning and just say, you know, thank you so much for joining us, Isabel. I mean, you really, truly, you know, you set the standard. And I know that you hear that a great deal, but um, everything sort of starts with you. And, you know, having people like Mara and Jeff to guide us has been beyond helpful. Um, and some of us are, are really learning um, the ethics code as we go. And we're, and we're guided by, you know, you and Jeff. So we really appreciate it. Um, but to that end, and, and as we sort of grow as a, as a board, um, I know one of the things that um, we discussed as a board is our ability to um, in, investigate or discuss matters um, on our own that, that we bring to the table. And so to, to that end, I'm just curious how you foresee that working. So, so for example, what would happen if the board um, decided that they wanted to look into a certain matter how, how would that work? So in terms of your office, so that we're not doing double duty, would we let Jeff know to ask you whether or not you're already investigating this issue or what, what is the practical flow of information there? It's a great question. Um, okay. <laughs> you are, you are the board of the ethics group. So as such, you have I, I presume you all signed non-disclosures and that type of thing, correct? When you took over your well, if you yes. have to, we have to let that ha you'll you'll have to because as as the ethics board, you are at a very high level of um, confidentiality. Yeah. So the, usually the law requires them to to yes. maintain confidentiality. So that that's even higher than non-disclosure agreement. So usually. I am notorious and people know very well that I neither confirm nor deny that any investigation is going on. However, with this board, I would um, I would let you know if there was the other stuff already do. I would tell you that. But normally, but then if it gets, it's leaked, I'll have to kill you because I've never had a leak. So then it's, <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm, you know, because to me, you, we're dealing with people's reputations, and I, 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 I never want to be responsible for because half the time what we investigate turns out not to be true. And I don't want I don't want this office. I don't want the OIG office to be used as a weapon. I just want you know we have to be very very careful not to ever disclose what we're doing until we're done. Right. That, and that that's that just I mean, I know we're going to eventually we could run into that. And so, you know, just to avoid our our waste <laughs> of additional resources, you know, just it's nice to know that that will be your process to say, no, nope, you don't need to look into that. That's the end of that story. We'll let I'll let you all know if there's anything I need from you kind of thing. And And in fact, this collaboration has started. A, you know, a few new procedures within the office where if a complaint comes into OIG that looks like it's ethics, um, it, we talk about it and it may be certified as a complaint and then comes over here. So in that way, we're not doing double duty. And then similarly, when something comes in to the board, um, you know, as part of Isabel and my interaction as her designee, she'll know about a new ethics complaint and will be in a process or in a position to let me know if something related is happening on the OIG side. So we're you know, that, that's happening all the time. And I'm also, I'm not the one that will certify a right. investigation. That would be my deputy. It's been Avon Brooks that would actually certify any ethics, so there would be no conflict for me. But I can't, I can't you know, ask me to do something. Can you? Yeah, it would be very odd. 
So we, we, we do our, we really are trying to keep everybody in their lane. This, this process. So to that end, can you hear me now? Yep. Donna? Hi, Donna. Okay, good. Hi. Uh, some, some, somehow I got muted in the system. But anyway, to that end, I was wondering if we could uh, put a process definition, a bubble chart, to the process that's followed when a complaint comes in. I, I know we have our new complaint form. It's a good form. It's being used more, more so than ever before. Uh, are we getting complaints? like to to ask this group and and of course with your group Isabel to make sure we're doing it right what's the process flow when a complaint form comes in so that way yeah. we're sure we're handling it very consistently I think that's a great ideal and I'm going to ask um, both Jeff and Mara to come up with that by the next meeting Is that possible? and we're perfect yeah, thank and, you and we're uh, we, we we're already on top of um, having a flow and we're we just basically need to have it writing now i mean a lot of what our a lot of what happens after we get a complaint is dictated by the code itself um so so then adding on to that what happens internally as an office uh will be an internal procedure which we can certainly share with you all by next time mm -hmm. and we have i've written out the procedures so for the whole complaint process from the when it comes to the mm -hmm. oig or the ethics board how it gets to you and then the whole process I've written out is just not finalized or any formal. So we can, I can finish that and submit that all to you with Jess' approval, and then you all could provide feedback or your opinion on that process. In the end, Jeff, are we going to try to have a manual almost, a policy and procedural manual for the ethics group? Yeah, I think there will certainly be an internal process manual. Um, if something is, if something raises the level that it is affecting uh, sort of the public's interaction with us, we might have to think about putting that in regulation um, in in our law. But for for these internal processes of how we deal with complaints and and interactions between the offices, I, I think that can stay in uh, internal procedure manual. Manual, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Internal operational yep. manual. Yep. Yep. Just to keep with that consistency, and you know, helping helping whoever handles this in the future because absolutely none of us will be here forever all right isabel thank you so much for being here today and being part of this mission it's good to be on the team oh i'm so grateful to all of you for being on the team and we, we need to have one more person on our team so that's right who, who which which that that is the mayor's or is that it's a mayor okay it's a mayoral point I, I did i did speak to michael huber who's now the um chief of staff so it is on their agenda but apparently a lot so <laughs> hoping i can't imagine it'll probably be within the next i'd say probably 30 30 to 60 days great i will continue to to bother them a lot <laughs> thank you so much isabel sit here and listen if that's okay with you all but I yes know, yes I know, I know arnold wants me to be here for for part of it so <laughs> you got it well with that in mind i'd be remiss if i didn't mention that the board may need to close some or all of this meeting to preserve the confidentiality mandated by ethics code or is otherwise authorized by the state open meetings act likewise upon adjournment of the open session the board may reconvene for an administration administrative session to discuss non-public administrative functions of the board so with that and steve could you also read the statement concerning october's or i guess it'd be november's administrative session um i have that under point two on the public agenda um i don't know if i can read it oops uh, it looks it. no it looks would you it looks like i printed out two of the same thing so i'm sorry about that yeah uh, go ahead. Why don't you go ahead and take it? I'm going to print mine out now. Yeah, sure. Thank uh, you. Oops. Per the Open Meetings Act, uh, the board discloses that it adjourned its virtual open meeting on November 10th, 2020, to enter into an, an administrative session at approximately 3.51 p.m. All board members were present um, except Melody Hangerer, who dropped off uh, for, um, for part of the time. Members discussed complaints and a city employee's request for guidance on potential outside employment. 
right, that's that. Since, and again, that's we read that because now that we are recording our meetings and those count as the minutes, um, we the Open Meetings Act requires us to, to simply state that that those details about adjournment in, in the next meeting minutes. Right. OK, um, so. I'm sorry, I'm having a you, you send out those zip files and they always take longer for me than like yeah. PDFs to download. But anyway, um, I'll get there. I just thought I. I had them in front of me. Well, so it, I apologize. It, no, that's OK. Um, it might be to move things along. Uh, we could probably go into the approval of the ethics notices to the new employees and officials and the new nominees. Um, brief and and did you all were you all able to open those documents? Mm -hmm. Yes. So as a as quick quick history on that, um, and I think I sent out this portion of the law as well. Weird. Section three twenty four of the ethics code um, requires basically all new employees to receive written notice in a form that's approved by the ethics board um, of certain ethics requirements, training courses, conflicts affidavit, financial disclosure statements, et cetera. Um, there's also an addition for new appointees or new nominees to boards and commissions that they also have to receive notice um, uh, of the pre-appointment disclosure where they can make conflicts known up front and still be appointed to the position. Long story short, these sorts of notices had not been been given out um, in the past, and part of it was updated in February, and, and those were just were never instituted or adopted by the board. So Mara and I have been working on putting together sort of a, a, a minimum ethics brochure that can be included with onboarding potentially to new employees that gives a very basic overview of what the ethics law is, the requirements there, um, and then a signature with the law requires them to sign that notice and for a copy to be returned to the board and placed in their personnel file. Um, a similar process with new board nominees uh, as well. We've been in touch on the first part of that we've been in touch with the HR department about making that packet part of the onboarding process. The city is moving over into something called Workday at, for a lot of its timekeeping and other personnel personnel matters. And we think we have a pretty good possibility of getting, getting this notice um, incorporated into that process. Same with board members. I've been in touch with the uh, mayoral appointee, appointee contact who's going to stay on for the new administration at least for a few months. And she is very, very supportive of um, of giving out these packets to new nominees and collecting the signatures that are required. So the two packets you saw are very similar, uh, one, but one is tailored to board members and one is particularly tailored to new employees. So if you had any any questions or feedback on those, we would welcome them. Um, otherwise, if they look good, um, the board can approve them. Yeah, do you want to skip to new business at this time? with respect to those ethics notices? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think there was any old business on the on the agenda. I apologize if I skipped over that. No, no, that's OK. I, I mean, you brought it up, so uh, yeah. it's 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 on the agenda. So I move that we move into new business. Can I get a second? Second. OK, all in favor of moving to new business, say aye. 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 All right, so before the board on new business today, it looks like we have two items of new business. The first item is the approval of the notice to the new employees and the new commission appointees. Um, do we have any discussion regarding the approval of the distribution of those notices? All right, um, you're raising your hand, Melody. Yeah, I just wanted to I just wanted to make a comment. I think that, um, you know, given Jeff's introduction, I think they look great. They're super professional. They're yep. very well put together. They're eye catching. I think it's exactly the type of information that when you are onboarding, you're overwhelmed with so much information generally administratively. And this is just the right format and amount of information. So I would just I, I fully support it. I think you guys did a great job. 
All right, any other, any other discussion? All right, hearing none, um, I'll move for the approval of the ethics notice to new employees and commission appointments as produced by Jeff and Mara. Do I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor of approving this ethics notice for distribution to employees and commission appointments signified by saying aye. 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 Okay, the motion carries. Um, would, shall we move to the second item of new business this afternoon with respect to our public agenda? Councilman Cohen's gift solicitation request for Healing City. Okay, without objection. Is there any discussion on council member Cohen's gift solicitation request healing city, Baltimore, 2021? I did not have any as we previously discussed this request, right, Jeff? Yeah, there were, there were a couple of pieces. So quick background, the board approved beginning of last year, healing city, 2020, um, which, which was very broad, had uh, had some of these same goals. And what ended up happening is near the end of the solicitation period, they had sort of focused on um, these three these three things: events, um, a coordinator who they're paying out of those funds, and these sort of trauma informed events. So it looks like they're they've actually narrowed their scope of what their solicitation funds are going for, and they've put that narrowed scope into the new into the new application so the old the old solicitation ends at the end of this year i believe so that's why they're they're basically requesting a, a continuation um and then what what you all had discussed or what i had sent around via email was just a disclosure about a potential potential communication between another entity that's interested in healing city type of type of work and councilman cohen just wanted to make you all aware that you know he may have some um, communications with them but He's not in some. He's not in a partnership for purposes of this solicitation. Arnold. Yes. I saw yes. your hand. No, it wasn't. So sorry. Oh, okay. That's okay. Melody, your hands hand up. Sign is still on. Oops. Now you're muted. Yep. And now I'm muted. Telling her she's muted. There, one day I'll get this right, y'all. Um, <laughs> no, just a quick refresh, refreshing of my recollection. So I, we, we revamped the solicitation form and asked some additional questions in a general form. Did we not? I'm, I'm not sure if it was re, I'm not sure if it was revamped. I think, I think you had some additional questions about a particular solicitation and, um, this is still the form that has technically been approved so we had the board has never approved a new form yet okay so uh, that's what i was i was questioning because i think yeah. we had some discussion about adding additional questions that were a little more probing about the use of the funds and the you know where they're where they're maintained and how they're tracked so i mean obviously this form this is a this is a carryover this um this issue and this form but i, I couldn't remember if we had if we had implemented a new form and whether that was even going to happen so i mean other than that, that was my only comment. And, and it, other than, you know, or do we know when we are going to start utilizing any new forms that have those additional questions? As, as I think as Mar and I have gotten a little more um, in depth with the gift solicitation regime, um, and by that I mean we've actually started trying to cut get the annual reports and the interim reports that are supposed to be due under these th under. Um, you know, when, when a solicitation is approved, the person who's been approved has to file reports that talk about accounting, you know, donations received, expenditures, et cetera. And those reports actually, I think, capture some of the additional information that you all are interested in up front. Um, and this may be a, a wider conversation to have, and I don't know if the board wants to have it now, but Mar and I have discovered that on some of those reports, it's very, ge very general just very general information about donations received and then how expenditures were made. We're not re getting receipts and you know, we're not getting um, invoices. I, I don't believe any sort of 
real review has been happening in the past on these things, and and I believe that it it needs needs to start happening. So, so I think we could have potentially even a whole special board session about the solicitation solicitation regime. Yeah, I, I agree. Sorry, Steve. I was just going to say that that was my follow up question that I had written down was that are we where are we in terms of following up with the reports that I know this is like eating an elephant, you know, trying to figure all this out. But but thank you. I, that, that you, you addressed my question before. So I'll just wait. Well, Mars. Done, yeah, Mars done a phenomenal job of of figuring out where given the active solicitations where we're deficient in the reports that we're supposed to be getting you know, getting people to get us their final cumulative reports and now we're working through reviewing those and i think that i think that i would find it helpful to have a conversation with you all about what we want to what you all want to require um, in accounting for these programs i mean sometimes we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars that there might be a line item on a report that just says reimbursement for supplies there's no there's no other real accountability for that money and I don't know if I don't know if maybe receipts are having to be shown to this the civic the civic fund who might be a, a spot the, the fiscal sponsor in some of these scenarios um, so we're trying to get a handle on that so I might we might have more information on that front when we meet especially to talk about solicitations um, I think I hear an appetite from the board though to to figure this out sooner rather than rather than later yeah, I just think it'll keep, we talk about uniformity and consistency yep. and the earlier we get everybody asked it or answering the same questions, the questions we want to hear the answers to, the better. And, right. and quite frankly, it'll, it'll streamline the process a little bit that way because we won't have to go back and ask these questions and wait another month for their response. We'll have it up front for all. Yep. All right, then. Uh, how do we want to treat the request at this time? Do we want to approve it or defer it? Or do we have any specific questions to send to the count? Any further questions to send to the councilman on this uh, request? Well, I have just a, a quick note. So um, when I was looking at the gift solicitations, there were about, I would say, 30 gift solicitations in 2020, and I believe all of them, or maybe or nine of them had outstanding reports. And um, I believe it was seven of them were from Councilman Cohen. So he's provided a lot of those reports in the last week. Uh, we're still missing, I think, three. So I think that would be something possibly to just consider when, um, for example, when we're writing our approval letters, just I'm slightly concerned with a lot of these gift solicitations that so many people have so many open solicitations and they're not kind of following the requirements of each solicitation. So that's just something I wanted to point out. Yeah, no, that's a really good point, Mara. Uh, to the that leads me to think that, you know, is it possible that we say, and I think the board has done this in the past, is it possible that we say, we're not accepting any new gift solicitations until delinquent reports are filed from your office for, outstanding reports are filed. Is that something the, that we the, would consider or does that sound draconian? The, well, the board does say in its approval letter, letters currently, it says no solicitation on this, on the sim, same or similar matter will be approved until they have their reports in. Okay, yeah. Um, and, and, and Mara, correct me if I'm wrong, currently the Healing City report is up to date, right? And they, yeah, they so actually- Yeah, that one is up to date, yeah. And they okay. provided answers even to, okay. amended, to amended questions that I, that I had to provide more detail. Um, and they, so yes, there are, I'm just saying, it, it, I think we should, could build that into the process, but so far the rules have been, if they, they need to get their reports in on that specific solicitation. Okay. Yeah. I thought it sounded familiar. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. There was one approval letter for, I believe it was the mayor's office and it said in the approval letter, previously we've had issues with your outstanding reports. You may not solicit if any of your campaigns, like moving forward, yeah. you have to fulfill all their, do all of your requirements or you cannot solicit any more campaigns. I saw that one time, which applied to the right. office. Right. All right. How are we going to leave this then? We're going to approve it this time since they're up to date. 
I just feel like I need to say say one thing just for the record. I mean, I in the spirit of uniformity, and it was it was nice to hear Isabel talk about that because I think it is important that we 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 use that as a guidepost when we're weighing in on these issues. But in the spirit of uniformity, I think it would make a lot of sense to ask of Councilman Cohen the same questions we asked on that most recent uh, solicitation. My hesitancy in raising this issue was that this um, particular solicitation was previously approved before Arnold and I joined. So, you know, I hate to apply a new a new standard going forward to something that was already approved. So I just wanted to raise the issue and not to belabor the point, but that, that would be my only um, comment. All right. I'm not averse to us sending the exact same questions to him as we did last time. I mean, especially this time, he knows what the questions are in advance. He knows what, what to expect. Um, uh, is there any urgency to this request that would uh, be um, detrimental uh, if we had, if we sent him uh, some questions and gave them a couple weeks to respond? Jeff or Mara, if you I know. I don't. I mean, I don't believe so. This was just approved by the Board of Estimates last week, so it's pr you know it's pretty pretty fresh. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so if you could, uh, you know, copy and paste basically from the last request, um, we'll be in a full position to approve at the next meeting. And in that letter, we could also note the other outstanding reports um, potentially, just as a just as a, a background here, not sure. saying that it's contingent on, but um, sort of giving a heads up that this is something that the board is, is on the board's radar. Sure. All right. Um, are we ready to, uh, I'm ready to move that we, uh, that we uh, send co correspondence to the councilman with the same questions as we have sent before regarding this request. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of uh, letter to councilman's office regarding questions regarding solicitation requests, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, and Donna? Okay, I heard three. I saw three. <laughs> okay. Yes, aye. Aye. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Okay, we've got four. All right, then that carries. And that is um, the new business under the public agenda. Are we all ready to move into um, administrative session? Is there anything we need to discuss before we move into administrative session, Jeff? I don't believe so. I think that covers everything on the public agenda. Yeah. All right, let me get a, let me get a motion to uh, go into uh, administrative session. Who's got a motion for me? I'll move that we we enter our administrative session. All right. Who's got a second? Second. All right. All in favor of moving into administrative session, signify by saying aye. 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 